What's up, dreamers? This week, I'm at a very special place with a very special person. His name is Brandon, and he's gonna tell us his awesome story of his crazy 2019 so far. Okay, Brandon, let's start from the very beginning of 2019. Yeah. So January, February time, tell us what were, you, what were you up to? What were you doing? The good, the bad? Tell us a bit about yourself. So it wasn't a very good uh, time for me uh, during this time. I was, um, I was at, I, I'm in addiction. Um, I was smoking cannabis uh, regular. I was smoking like, three to five joints a day. I wasn't really living my life really. I was kind of just existing like day to day. Um, not really having any hopes for the future or looking forward to life. I was just, yeah, just existing, just not, just floating around life, not really doing much. And uh, it was quite depressing really. So then what happened around sort of April time? What went on? So it got to the point where I think my parents kind of knew my situation, what was happening. And because I got, because I'm at the age where I was kind of an adult on my own, they didn't really want to like go into much into my life. And like, I think it was quite hard for them uh, to say something for a long time. But eventually I think they gained the courage to, to say something to me. And uh, they brought me up on it. And um, yeah, it was quite a hard conversation really. They just, they said, they were just really, really sad for me and how I was living my life and they wanted they wanted so much more for me. And at that time, I couldn't really see it. I thought they were just trying to chuck me out of the house, get rid of me. Um, but now I can definitely tell their place was coming from a good heart and uh, we just had a conversation about rehab, basically. And when they first told me that, I was, I was kind of lost for words. Um, I, I couldn't really exp ever see myself going to rehab. Rehab like, sounds like quite a big kind of scary thing, doesn't yeah, it? Like you see it in the movies and TV and it, so it, it's portrayed a certain way and it's just, uh, mm. we were looking at uh, quite a few rehabs and uh, we came across this place, the Oldham Manor, which is uh, it's a Christian response to rehab, which I was a bit wary of because I, during that time, I was a bit, I was walking off that path for a while and uh, we had an interview and uh, just fell in love with the place. It just seemed full of life, the way they teach, the re uh, how, just, the, just, just, just working with people and the way they teach people like how to live life. It just, and the residents and the staff, it just, it just clicked like that really. And uh, I knew I wanted to go there. So if you can't hear that, there's some people who have now started watching TV next door. So we're gonna move locations magically. Three, two, one. And now we are back and we are in Brandon's dorm yep. room, whatever yeah, you wanna call room. it, yeah. where he's currently staying. And back into it then. <laughs> so what was like the first sort of month, six weeks like? You're in a totally new place. You've had loads of stuff sort of taken away mm. from you, I guess, cause you weren't allowed what? Like phones, TV, like yeah. anything. No. So what was that sort of first period like? Um, yeah, it was quite hard to adjust really, uh, obviously, because when I was at home, I was, kind of, I was taking advantage of, of just living with my, I was living with my parents and uh, I was staying up like really late, like gaming with my PS4. Like I would like eat whenever I want, just go home, like wake up in the middle of the night and make like loads of snacks. Uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, just like going to bed whenever I wanted and just doing pretty much going out whenever I wanted without um, these restrictions and going here for the first four weeks, I had to stay in the premises. Uh, I couldn't go out. Like we would go out in the leisure centre, uh, which was nice. So I have a little swim, a little sauna time, a little relaxing. Um, but other than that, I was just, yeah, I couldn't go out. I couldn't have any visits. I could only have 
a 15 minute phone call uh, once a week. Sounds savage. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, pretty, savage. it's pretty hard, not gonna lie. As you started going through, you know, the, the schedule and the healing and all the sort of, you know, meetings that you have, one-to-ones and group therapy and, you know, all the other stuff that it looks like you're up to, mm. what sort of began to happen like in your heart and in your mind? What kind of changes started to happen? I think definitely after the first four weeks, I felt a quite a big change because it took quite a while for me to, to come off cannabis and for it to get out of my system and uh, once it came out I, it was just weird it was just like I had a whole new prospect on life and I wanted to do so much and I just kind of wish I did that when I was at home even though you're working on the grounds when you're like with the staff you get to talk to them talk to them and like talk about like your experience and like and just get to know them and that's what I think is a really good thing about Yeldor is how Mm. you're not just like stuck in a room doing groups and like doing all this therapy. You're actually on the work doing some physical, physical work that just kind of is really good for your mental health. And uh, I start to make friends with people, open up a little bit more and yeah, just start to get, start to go really well for me, to be honest. Great. So good. So where is God. First question, where was God before you came here and what did you think of him? And where is he now and what do you think of him? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, before I came here, I kind of strayed off that path for quite a few years. It was, it was, it was quite hard, obviously, because I grew up in a Christian home. My whole family's Christian, like my great great grandma, my fifth cousin, like the whole <laughs> I family. Have a fifth cousin. <laughs> I just wanted to be my my own journey really. I wanted mm. to to be more my decision, knowing that I didn't have any family influences or anyone mm-hmm. influenced me to go into it. Mm. And uh during like not gonna lie, during the second month, halfway in between, I was um I was I was gonna leave. Uh uh, I think after being leave, sober, leave yeah, leave yeah. here, yeah, because after being sober for like six weeks, I was like, I'm good. I don't need this place. Like, I, I think it was just the the feelings of being sober and feeling very fresh in my mind that I feel like I didn't need it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I realised that was the wrong decision, and uh, I actually went to church that Sunday. Uh, this uh, church called Greyfairs Church in Reading. Um, and I just prayed about it. Uh, started crying. I'm a, I'm a massive cry when I'm praying to God. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just felt like a massive relief and a massive weight lift off my back that I just needed to be here. Mm. And for that week, I was just like, nothing got to me. It was like the spirit was in me every day that week. I was just mm. like, I think people could see it. Mm. It was quite an inspiration, like seeing how, I don't know, I, I was just, I've never felt like that in my life. The only time I've ever felt like that is when I've been at New Day and I've been filled with the spirit. But it was like, instead of just that one hour or, or that moment, it was. 24 <laughs> 7 for five days oh wow so, so good so good it was a bit draining to be fair because after after that week i kind of yeah went back down to my my normal level but it just gave me like a massive grasp of like what 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 it's like to be in god's presence and like that spirituality and oh wow come on so good it just blew me away can, can you remember like, you said you know you were at you you guys all went to visit a church, right? Mm, yeah. Um, that's what I do here every Sunday. Um, can you remember what you, what kind of things you were praying when that happened? You know, before you got filled with the Spirit and started crying and stuff. I was just saying to God, like, if you're here, I just want want you to know how sorry I am. I, it was more of an apology and uh, mm. if he could accept me back into his life, I think, because I strayed. Because even though I strayed from that path, I always still believed in God. And I think I just had a lot of guilt brought with me because I was like, I still believe in you, but I've still done 
all these things like to disappoint you and like mm. yeah I think that's what 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 made it so much nicer to feel like him just saying to me like I love you and like hearing that from him just like it just gave me so much relief from mm. it. So I recently brought a book uh, by Adrian Holloway called The Shock of Your Life, mm -hmm. which I read quite a few years ago. Uh, I just wanted to reread re read it because it was just it just applied me to me a lot more. Just because I come back to God, obviously, I just needed that refresher really. And uh, mm -hmm. after reading that, I was just like, wow! It just gave me so much more clarity and like. Oh, nice. And then I gave it to Gary. And he he kind of believed in a god, but he he was kind of like in between with the whole Christianity side. And giving him that book, I just felt like I needed to give him that book. Like it was just like give Gary that book, and he will find out the truth. <laughs> and after he read that book, he came up to me and he was like, "Mate, you you like you just set in stone my faith." And I was just like, wow. That was like, so that good. was such a nice feeling just to know you're bringing someone like closer to God through that. Mm. And then like we had, um, a few weeks later, we had like a 24, not 24 hour, it was like a, a night of worship. So instead of just church sermon and worship, we just had worship for like continuously for like two hours. And then uh, I, I just prayed for him really. Because there was this, uh, this word that this woman gave up where like, when God comes into your life, it, your life is like a vase and he shatters it to build you up like in his in his image. And I just thought like that applied directly to Gary and how he was at the moment because he just come back to God mm -hmm. and we just prayed together and we were just like hugging each other like, oh, it was just an amazing feeling. Really, <laughs> like. So my next question is, what's next for Brandon? Where do you go from here? I've got two months, two more months left of the first program, which is the first six months. Okay. Uh, and then I go on to the lodge, which is four to six months. And that's, uh, you live, it's like a small flat, just on the same ground as the other, just a little bit further away. And you, you live there with some guys and it's just increasing independence and freedom, really. Okay. You cook your own meals, you wake up, you have to create your own structure. Uh, you have a voluntary job two days a week and you go to church on a Sunday like you choose. I see. It's, so it's just kind of like, like a halfway yeah, sort halfway, of mark. Yeah. So you can get a bit more freedom and mm. a bit more responsibility but mm. not all the, not thrown out yeah, into the middle of yeah. town. We're like, I'll fend for yourself. Okay, Brand, before we go, I've got one more question for you. Yeah. And what I want to ask you is if there's like a 19, 20 year old guy watching this, he's smoking weed, he's feeling like he is maybe just existing, like you explained earlier. Mm. What advice would you give him about, firstly the weed, but also just about like life and maybe feeling a bit down? What would you say? So I know it's hard, like when, you're, when you've been smoking for a long time, it takes a, a long time to get out of your system. And I think if you can march through that process of not just having like, a, a day or two break, a week break, a two week break, like completely get it out of your system. If you can do that, then you have aced the first step. And after that, you get so much clarity and so, such a massive new look on life. Mm. And um, it just makes you appreciate what's around you more. I think wow. obviously when you're smoking for so long, your mind is very, it's very foggy. Like even though it gives you like little things like uh, just when, when you're smoking like listening to music is very like it just makes it so much nicer and just like sometimes visuals and feelings but as the years go on I think you can kind of detach yourself from those emotions and when you're smoke only when you're smoking you can kind of feel those or detach yourself vice versa mm -hmm. and when you come off that it, it just it just changes you so much like I, it's so hard to explain like you, I kind of just like when you you just wake up one day after you've it's out of your system and you just appreciate everything more like your family and your friends those that are around you I think after after so long of smoking you kind of you, you you see your friends but you don't really see them as much because like the weed is your priority and that takes you away mm. from everything else in life wow. and uh 
personally for me, um, just coming back to God really, that kind of massively helped me in my life. It's just something else to lean on other than myself. Because I think yourself is a good person to lean on, but it's not always the easiest. And if you don't believe in God, maybe family, friends, or just something, having someone accountable for you while you're going through that process will help you massively. Because the worst thing you can do in addiction is to go through it alone. Mm. You always need someone there, whether it's God, your parents, your family, your cousins, or even like someone you work with just to, to hold you accountable of just this process and yeah. Nice. Well, Brian, I think that is a sick place to end this video. <laughs> Thanks so much. Cheers, mate. He looks so good, he's doing so well. I'm so proud of him. Um, I'm sure we will update you on what Brandon is up to in the future. But thanks so much for watching this video. Like and subscribe and do all of the things. Remember, you are wonderful. Be thankful. Be thankful for those around you. If you are struggling with addiction in any kind of way, like there is hope and there is help. Please mm -hmm. don't do it alone. Peace. Love. Bye. Drink, 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 drink.